What's up guys, and welcome back to another eBay Miniature Rescue. Today, we're gonna work on this sweet turtle mage. So this week we have a pretty sweet commission job sent in by Bo. Now this is a dark sword miniature, and honestly I've never heard of that line, but they have some pretty cool miniatures, uh, more specifically for Dungeons and Dragons. Now obviously I'm going to be painting this model in this video. I'm going to be painting it pretty much in the same colors that are already on this model, but you know, you can see it's seen better days. So I'm going to do some fixing, um, we're going to repair the staff, we're going to strip the miniature all the way down, do some cleanup, and I'm going to kind of walk through how I do that. So the first thing I use is LA's Totally Awesome in a Sonic Cleaner. Now this is a pretty concentrated like degreaser soap, and you put it in the Sonic Cleaner and it agitates the paint and takes it off really quickly. I leave it for a little bit, run it for a few cycles, and pull it out and use a toothbrush to clean that off. Once that paint is removed, I'm going to go through each of the joints and put a pin in between them, essentially, using a paper clip and a little hand drill that's the same size as a paper clip. Now putting these together and gluing them really makes that bond super strong. So even with pretty decent handling, it's not really going to break off. Now, Bo did this cool conversion where he took the original staff and replaced the end with this cool kind of Cthulhu octopus head. Now, we're going to get to the story behind that in a little bit, but for now, I'm just going to kind of show you what I did. So, the octopus head is pretty big, so I took a larger drill that matched the size of the actual staff, and instead of pinning it, I drilled a large hole in the back of his head and shoved it right on. Now because of the size of this thing, it fits pretty well, and it looks like it's supposed to be there. Now after all that glue is dried and set, I'm going to come back in with some primer. In this case, I'm using Stino Res Black Primer, which I've been using more and more and I'm really enjoying, and I'm just going to do an all over prime. A good practice that I like to keep is doing a zenithal highlight using Liquitex white ink. And through the airbrush, we're just going to lightly kind of mist from the top down, and we're just going to pick up all that detail. And a lot of this is going to get covered up with paint and, you know, there's not really going to be a point to it, but it's really going to let me see where everything is and what to really focus on as far as highlight points and any of the detail that I don't want to miss. The other nice thing about doing a zenithal is that you can come back in with different kinds of paints, some transparent paints or inks, something like that, and you can tint certain areas. And you can really get that nice gradient from that, you know, really high bright white all the way down to black. So the first color we're going to use is Liquitex Burnt Umber. This is an ink that can be used with a brush or shot out of an airbrush. And since we did this nice zenithal, I'm going to use that to my advantage. For the first pass with this color, I'm going to be pretty light about it so that we can see that zenithal and get that really nice gradient from that kind of lighter brown all the way down to the really opaque burnt umber at the bottom. Then I'm going to come in and add just a little tiny bit of this carbon black ink and kind of from the bottom up enhance that zenithal by giving deeper shadows to the rest of the shell. 
Since I want to do more filtering on some of the other parts, I'm going to come back in with this Liquitex white ink and cover up a lot of those oversprays from that brown and basically just redo some of the zenithal that I already did. Now the nice thing about inks in general is that they can be very opaque. So you can put them on fairly lightly and they will cover up almost anything. For our second filter, I'm gonna use this Minotaur Ghost Tint. And this is a green one. And I've heard a lot of good things about these ghost tints. Um, you don't see them around very often, or at least not in my area. But I was lucky enough to get some. So I went over that octopus head to give it that nice tint all over. Then I came back in with some Escorpina Green, kind of from the top down, same way we did the Zenithal. And I just went over that to kind of lighten up that front part. Then I pretty much did the same thing with Moon Yellow, and that really just pushes that saturation of that green and really livens it up. And for the last tint that we're gonna really do is a dioxazine purple and a fluorescent pink from Golden. Now I really like these paints because they're extremely thin. They work really well through the airbrush and they're very, very transparent. So they really pick up any of these color transitions, this black to white, and you know, you can shoot them lightly and kind of go over it and they become opaque. They're pretty versatile as far as like non-traditional wargaming paints. From here on out, we're pretty much just gonna use a paintbrush and we're gonna start with Rackarth Flesh on the staff. Just a quick note, the head on this staff is from the Mind Flare model from Reaper Miniatures just in case you were wondering. Stay it on scale green for all of the skin. Now, I went with this color because while being just a tiny bit darker than the original color that Bo used, I thought this is a nice base coat to work from that also mixes well with, you know, whites and off whites to really push those highlights. And I wanted to do some fun things with this skin and kind of make it look a little bit more lively. So starting off with this darker tone made a little more sense than, you know, something bright. Averlin Sunset as a base coat for the plastron of the turtle. Yes, I did look that up. I was going to call it something stupid before, and I thought better of it. Coming in with Chaos Black for all of the leather straps. Black is a pretty good choice for these particular straps because there's already a lot of brown on this model, so we don't really want to overwhelm it with kind of all sameness. And it really goes nicely with the yellow. With Rhinox Hide, I am going to take care of the leather satchel that he's got right on his hip. Now, this does look very similar to the other brown, but I'm going to come in later with a highlight that will definitely change that and not make it look like the rest of the browns. Eshin Gray as a base coat for all of his wizard sleeves. Something that I really enjoy about you know, getting models from a bunch of different people or rescuing models, you know, in whatever condition is getting to know the story of each model. And while that's obviously not important to painting or 
really anything other than pure entertainment, I think it's pretty fun to share. So I'm going to share what Bo sent me as the backstory to his D&D character. Snookum Chuck Darkshell was a scholar from the Snout of Ogmar, home of the Tortal People. He was exploring some ruins in search of more knowledge when he came across a tome. Upon opening this tome, he came across text and images of this ancient forgotten deity. This deity was dark and twisted, a lord of madness, and his name was Cthulhu. Upon turning the final pages of the tome, the book began to shimmer with eldritch energy. As Snookum Chuck turned the final page, the energy enveloped him, and he was granted a vision of Cthulhu himself. Driven mad by the sight of the deity, he pledged himself to the dark being in his crazed state, and in return, Cthulhu himself became his patron, granted him the powers of a warlock in return for his pledge. So that was a little bit abridged, but you get the idea. Pretty awesome. Bo also went on to say that in the campaign, uh, his character actually managed to summon Cthulhu on the very last session of their campaign. Uh, he was working with the DM in secret for over a year. And I mean, that kind of dedication is pretty awesome. And hopefully we can get this model to be as awesome as that story and live up to the legacy that is Snookum Chuck Dark Shell. So I know I skipped a few of the paints, but basically I finished doing some of the base coating and I'm laying down some washes for the appropriate colors. Now I want to put a lot of this onto each of those areas and just get a little bit more detail in those recesses. Then we're going to come back in with our base colors, starting with Stegadon Scale Green. And I'm going to start to layer up and highlight all of that skin. And specifically, what I'm really trying to do is pick out some of the more prominent areas and put a little bit more texture into this skin. For some reason, on top of his head, there really isn't any texture where there's a whole bunch of it on his legs. So I'm trying to mimic that by stippling in some of this color and just trying to blend it. And we're gonna go lighter and lighter and try and get some more texture out of that. So like I said, we're going to go a little bit lighter. I'm taking some of this Rackarth flesh because it's basically an off-white and it's right on my wet palette. And I'm mixing that into the Stegadon scale green. Now I'm going to go over all of those same highlight areas and stipple and continue to push that texture and really just see where we can take that. I'm going to water down some scrag brown into a glaze consistency and kind of put that onto the lower parts of each of these little plates on his plastron. And that way we get some kind of a little bit of a gradient into those recesses from the middle of that. And we're not really working with a really bright yellow. I'm also going to use this color in more of a traditional layer consistency on that leather pouch. And that's really where we're going to get that difference in those browns. It's not going to be the same as the shell or any of the other parts. So we darkened down a lot of this model with Agrax Earthshade, including those gray sleeves. And I'm going to come back with this Eshin Gray and kind of go over those black leather straps just to give them a nice highlight and then pick out any of the really raised folds on those sleeves so that it still looks gray but you know it's a little bit dirty with that Agrax Earthshade. Ground, 
Coming back in with some corn red, I'm going to go over all the raised details on this loincloth. And then really what we're going to do is come back in and start to glaze in some other colors and kind of make it a little bit more interesting. This is one of the areas that I was given essentially a choice of whatever color I wanted. It was red before, so I thought, you know, it looked pretty good with the other colors that we have. And I just wanted to push that a little bit further. So the first thing that I did was take some Nagaroth Knight and I watered that down into a glaze. And from about halfway down, I pushed that up into that kind of folded recess where those chains are holding on. And I did probably four passes of this total to really get that gradient going. We're going to let those glazes dry for a little bit and I'm going to put a little bit more attention back onto this chest. I'm going to come in with some Ushabti bone which is a fairly off white but it has a good amount of yellow in it and I'm going to highlight all of those different panels. I'm also going to stipple in kind of the central sections and a little bit working into that scrag brown gradient that we did earlier and that way there's a little bit more texture as you kind of see on real turtles you know there's all sorts of little spots and kind of weird patterns all over, you know, the chest. I also use this color to highlight the staff. Now it was brown before, but in trying to keep away from too much brown on this model with that really dark brown shell, I thought this was a nice alternative. You know, all the recesses have that Agrax Earthshade kind of dark brown, but it offsets nicely with this off-white. Coming in with some Moot Green, we're gonna tie some of that Cthulhu magic into our Warlock. And so I'm gonna drop this into the eyes, that way he's got that kind of magic from within and, you know, part of that whole Cthulhu staff. What I really like about Putting the green in the eyes specifically, you know, showing that magic is that it kind of gives that secret, you know, he's got this secret that he's hiding and it's kind of just within him. So it definitely lends to that story, which I think is pretty awesome. A lot of people have been asking for me to show the base. Now, I've never been too comfortable with showing it because more often than not, it's just kind of something that I try my best to do, but you know, I'm not any kind of particular expert, but here we go. So I use some Rhinox hide to just fill in the base. I use some Agrelin earth to kind of tie that little rock together with the rest of it. And you know, it gives a nice crackle look. Then I came back in with some PVA and put some of this army painter static grass on there. Now, I didn't use a static grass applicator, obviously, but, you know, it's going to get covered up a little more, so I'm not too worried about it sticking up. Then I used some of these really cool little, like, flowery looking things. I chose this yellow one because I think it, it gives a nice contrast to the, the purple, and it kind of brings in more of that yellow. Then I put a little bit of kind of red in the back to kind of do the same thing, tie it in with that loincloth, and then just put another kind of random grass tuft so you know it made it uneven three is usually better than two or so i've been told so right before we get to the reveal i just want to give a huge thank you to Bo for sending this in for me to do as a commission the support means a lot it really goes a long way in keeping this channel going and keeping me doing this as often as i possibly can so seriously man thank you and you know, I know I already sent you the pictures and you probably, well, you might not have the model yet, but it should be there pretty soon. But I appreciate it and I hope you enjoy it for a long time. Thank you once again for joining me on another eBay miniature rescue. 
If you enjoyed something about this video, please consider hitting that like button, subscribing, and sharing the video with your friends. If you would like to donate a model to this channel or possibly a commission, much like Bo did in this case, then check out the description box below for all the information. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video. All right. Thank you again for sticking around to the end of the video. Our little discussion corner, if you will. I think it might be appropriate to come up with a, I don't know, some kind of a fun name for it. Um, I don't know, you guys choose. Something interesting. <laughs> um, for the most part, I've been working on this commission and still trying to figure out what to do with these Blight Kings. Now, I'm planning on doing them for next week, although, you know, that might be difficult with everything that's going on right now. So we'll kind of see what happens and play it by ear. But I've been working on uh, a few of them. I've got some green stuff on some of them and some color choices. Uh, I'm not 100% sure which direction I'm going. I think I'm going to go for, what is it, the Drowned Men? I really like that idea and that I haven't seen a lot of work in that kind of area so far. So I'm going to see how far I can push it, you know, have some fun with it. Yeah, I started some green stuff work. You can kind of see that a little bit. I need like better lights for this. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, yeah, I'm trying to do some like seashell type stuff on this, this pauldron, kind of see how that goes Do this like seaweed chainmail kind of thing so I'm gonna include that obviously in the video just kind of showing how I did each of those things I'm still not hugely familiar with green stuff but you know trying to get in a little bit more work more practice and just make mistakes and see what happens thanks for sticking around again I will see you next time